and Deuteronomy 1 and 6, it said, The Lord, our God, spoke unto us in Herod, saying, You have dwelt long enough on this mountain. And Ezekiel 37 and 3, a very familiar scripture here at St. Paul, I'm sure. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And for a topic, just let us use, can these bones live? Amen. Son of man, can these bones live? Amen. I got to get you from the mountain to the valley. All right, there comes a time that we must change the way that we have been doing some things that have been keeping us from succeeding in our lives and getting the blessings from God. You see, we've been on our mountaintop too long. It's time to come down off that mountain of lies that we've been lying on folk with. It's time to come off that mountain of backbiting that you've been living on. It's time to come off that mountain of gossiping that you've been doing a lot of gossiping on. It's time to come off that mountain of ditch digging that some of us live on. It's time to come off that mountain of sinning. He has led us out. He has led us to the promised land. It's time to take the step toward the land that we should be living in. Now, now we've been dwelling on this mountain too long, saying, woe is me. We've been dwelling on this mountain saying, why is all this trouble coming my way? But you have been lying on folk. You've been doing some folk wrong. You won't even say hello to the neighbor that's live next door to you. And if their car break down, you won't give them a ride. You won't even say nothing to the person sitting next to you in church. But if they sitting in your seat, you will come up and stand over them and look at them because you want your seat. It's time to come down from the mountain that we've been living on. We are like the valley of dry bone. We are proud towards one another. The preacher on Sunday morning had to prop you up, had to lean you up, and had to hold you up. But before you get home, you're talking about him too. It's time to come off the mountain that we've been living on. We're likened to the valley of dry bone. Among those carried off by Babylon was a young man named Ezekiel, who was obviously a trained priest. When we study Ezekiel and the things that he did in the temple, we must conclude that he had a form of training as a priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But along with the vision that Ezekiel revealed here, there's one thing he's wanted to convince Israel of, that God had not fallen and he was not dead. Yeah. He wanted Israel to understand that her God, as he depicts in the vision where he saw a vague outline of a man sitting on a chariot throne engulfed in a cloud, he was saying, when he saw the wheel in the middle of wheel, he was telling them that there was more than one wheel in this middle of a wheel. He was telling Israel, first of all, about the ruling providence and power of God, about Israel was part of God's eternal plan and purposes. While Israel was one wheel ever moving, about was another wheel turning. That was the Babylonian wheel, and it was moving all above. the another wheel, and it was moving above that. And that was God universal wheel and God universal prayer. And all of those wheels was keep on moving. They never stop turning because of all God's plan is always moving. Maybe you think that you stopped God's plan by cussing the preacher out, but you didn't. Maybe you think you have blocked him, but you didn't. Maybe you couldn't see the movement, but God will always moving and never stopping. You, you can't bother them and you can't stop them. For the writer here tells us there were angels on God. So to Israel, we see in the vision, Babylon was a desolate place. Babylon represented a desert to Israel. 
a valley of displacement, a valley of hopelessness, a valley of dry bones, a valley of lifelessness. Babylon to Israel was a valley. Now somebody said, preach it. How can you say Babylon was a desert? It was a great city. Well, you see, a city may be one thing to one person and another thing to another person. And all together something else for another group of people. When the white European came to this country, when they came up on these shores, America was a land of promise, was a mountaintop of possibilities, was a mountaintop of adventure. But when the Negroes embraced this, these shores, to him it was a valley, a valley of slavery, a valley of oppression, a valley of sorrow, so that often that we had to sing Back then, one of these days, I'm going to eat at the feasting table. One of these days, the chair of God would swing low. So that the Babylon to Israel was a place of hopelessness. It was a bad place of dry bone. Well, the prophet tells us, and considering a prophet, well, you say, what is a prophet? Since the prophet was God representative, God ambassador, God watchman there in Babylon, you know the word prophet can be interchanged with the word preacher. For a prophet is a preacher, and a preacher ought to be a prophet. Not a prophet such as we are told and talked about sometimes, not a phony person, not somebody with hands tied all up and sweat, talking about you got a little luck, but I mean a real prophet, a prophet called of God, a prophet of God, a prophet sent from God, a prophet inspired by God. For a prophet is one who knows the past, who understands the present, yes, sir. and out of his knowledge of the past and his insight of the present, he's able to predict the future. Right. A prophet is one who has sight, insight, and foresight. With sight, he looks on things, and insight, he looks into things. With foresight, he looks beyond things, such as a man was Ezekiel. He was a God-sent prophet. And he uses the symbol of the valley to describe Israel's Babylonian situation. The symbol of a valley. You see, a valley is just a low place between mountains. To Israel, there was a obstructed mountain surrounding her. Her situation in Babylon had an economic situation, a social situation, a political situation. Religious mountains encircled and had her enclosed inside. She was down in the stagnant air of the valley in Babylon. So that he had to say that he was in the spirit that gives validity to you to know that he was in God's word. People speak a little about spirit now, but when I, I was a little boy, you could always hear the people in the church say, the spirit led me. Now it's unusual for folks to say that now. The Spirit told me to do certain things, but it's unusual for folks to say that now. I was led by the Spirit, but it's unusual for folks to say that now. So that Ezekiel, this prophet, was spiritual-minded, spiritual-filled, God-conscious prophet. He said that while being in the Spirit, the Lord led him out to the valley, and then led him to the midst of the valley, and set him down in the midst of the valley. What he was really saying is God led him to the heart of Israel's problem and Israel's situation in Babylon. God took him to the heart of Israel's Babylon situation, and when the Lord had led him to the heart of Israel's problem, he sat down there. Then out of fear, Ezekiel missed something. Then the Lord led him around about the valley, circled around on all sides that he might see and not miss the remote problems of the Israel situation. Now some of 